Hey, what's up, guys? It's Benjamin Anthony here, and welcome to the bar. Today, we're going to be reviewing the featured film Magnificent Seven. Just came out this weekend. Um, we just saw it, and I'm already ready to forget about it. Yeah, so so far, it's made 63% on Rotten Tomatoes, I believe, and 35? 35 million. 35 million on the movie, which is surprising to me just because this movie was a little lackluster in my part. Um, but overall, uh, let's talk a little bit about what the movie's about. Um, so, so far, it starts off with a guy named Bartholomew Bogue. Played by Peter Sarsgaard. Sarsgaard. Um, so he comes into a town and he's... Kind of just takes over, right? Like yeah, a, takes over the town. Kind of like, like out basic, of nowhere. Yeah. yeah, basic bad guy just taking over a town. And um, certain people are just uh, murdered and killed. And then they want to hire a hitman? Hitman or... Uh, hump, no, bounty hunter. There you go. Um, played by Denzel Washington, Sam... What is it, Sam Chisholm? Chisholm. I, mm-hmm. I, can't, I can never. I, I know. I wanted to pronounce name. it different. Chisholm, um, where he comes in and he picks up sev- six other guys, um, and then they go into an adventure of kind of getting the town back, and that's pretty much what the story is straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie, man. What is this movie about? Again, spoiler alert. Just because. This we need to talk about why this movie didn't do as good as it should have done. Um, the cast was great. I felt like they got great actors overall, but it was just very lackluster in my end. Um, no, no real detail in the characters. Right. Um, no development. Yeah, you know the the main villain was just bland. It was a, a gen- generic villain, and I think if they would have just made him better, more evil, more you know into the movie, because I think we saw him for what like five minutes. Of he the comes movie? in and does this strange thing in the beginning where he has a jar of dirt and he brings out a kid, yeah. and I'm like, what are you proving? I thought there was going to be like a scorpion inside the jar. Yeah. I thought oil well, maybe there was oil in there the uh, thing is that there's a mine in next to this uh little town and he wants to pretty much take over the mine so what he's going to do is take over the he's going to pillage the land take take over the town and get rid of as many people as he can and there's a woman in the film that um they kill her husband and i don't even remember the actor's I name i don't remember because the, her name i don't she was so bland it was something where like the, these characters just didn't matter these characters were not fleshed out at all yeah. so you, you don't even care about them and, and that's the, best, the problem yeah i think that is you know not just talking negative but like the best parts were actually getting the seven together i think those are some of the better parts you know when they personally my favorite one of them was the the actual indian red harvest played by martin um Seismer. I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, I, I cannot pronounce his name. Sorry about that. But see, yeah, he played great. I had the way they introduced him, it was very easy. Since you know, just yeah, right. Since is he French? I don't know. It was very easy to bring him in. You know, he they just bit the meat together and they're like, hey, we're friends, yeah. and that was yeah. great. It, it was, was like, it was a very ritual simple, thing. but it was cool. You know, um, they brought in other characters, just like uh, Ethan Hawke um, as the Good Knight. Uh, he was great in the film. I like Ethan Hawke. This is the first time we've seen. Denzel and Ethan Hawke together since Training Day, right. which is very cool. Much, much um, better film. Yeah, and it's something where, I don't know, like I just felt like these characters were great, but then when they went into it, you know, Chris Pratt was in it. Uh, See, and the thing that, what the how the marketing gets you is you think, oh my God, Chris Pratt, you know, is going to be awesome. And Denzel always delivers, as we all know. But I just felt that Chris Pratt gave us Chris Pratt. And... I hope this doesn't become a problem in future movies for him. Well, see, like a lot of people are saying that. Um, two two top actors right now they to talk about would be um Chris Pratt and um Jennifer. No, what's her name? I forget her name. Uh, from uh, Mockingbird or whatever. Okay. Uh, her Jennifer Lawrence. There you go. They're the same. They don't change characters in a lot of their movies. But to me, I sometimes agree. if it's not broken, why fix it? But I do understand. You know, you brought it up to my attention, Jim Carrey. You know how he's married. Similar to a lot of the characters that he does. Mm-hmm. But Chris Pratt, I, I thought he was funny. I thought he was good. You know, when he was making fun of the Mexican. I'm Mexican and that was pretty funny when he says this is, things. This is what you just said right now rings so true to me, which is it's just good. You know, for me, it's very colored by numbers. Like, you, we want a sunset. We, we need cowboys running into the distance. We need uh, women ushering children into safety. And the director met all the marks, but... Just because you meet all your marks doesn't make it a good film. And I'm a big Western fan, and I agree. I like the, the the sceneries were great. I loved, you know, it was all outdoors. It was all played in beautiful settings, and it was good. But overall, yeah, like it just it did feel section structure. It's a two hour film, first of all. Too long. A two hour film, and it took too long to get to the point. The did thing, anybody fall asleep at the theater when you went? Not in mine. But for me, three <laughs> people: someone behind me, someone next to me, and someone below me fell asleep. And I was like, "Wow!" If that it doesn't ring true to what the movie, I was falling asleep and 
Yeah, and I think what really brought it to me, like, you know, it's all about negatives here for some reason, but overall, the good things were the fighting scenes, the shooting scenes. I think those were great. Right. I it think was... those were very coolly, ma- um, very coolly made, uh, cool made, um, the way Denzel, you know, the, whoever the, the stuntman was riding the horse, yeah. jumping back and forth, the explosions, the, the, the sharp shooting. The set design, the costume design, it's all good. Every, yeah, everything's great, but it just felt very lackluster. I remember, this is a remake to the 19... 19- 70s. 60s 1960s film which that one was a remake from 1954 um called samurai seven it was a japanese film that they wow, made yeah i know that so they remade it to that into a western kind of like the americanized version of that so should this be the end no more remakes of i don't this? think I, I always thought remakes were bad you know and a, a lot of films like i don't think i've found one remake that i've liked so far in the video that we uh posted on instagram on friday um i said that i wasn't looking forward to this film because i'm just not a fan of remakes i think if it's done it's been done, and it's if it's okay, then why do this? Obviously, this didn't really yeah, it didn't hit the mark. Hit and the mark. It it was something where you had a great cast and you failed, and it was something you didn't fail. You just kind of you just kind of wanted to remake it. You wanted to kind of bring the western into the new era because we haven't seen a western movie in a long time. True, you know. Um, so I I think that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to make it more modernized Western with a funny comedic one, kind of stereotypical Mexicans and Asians and Indians kind of thing, you know. But overall, it just it didn't hit the mark. It didn't hit what we wanted, which was these actors interacting beautifully, the story the story where you, you know, know you know what's a good um Western just came to mind is True Grit that came out in two thousand and ten. You should really check out that movie if you uh like Westerns if you say Yeah, like if you like Westerns, another one would be um The Quick and the Dead. Uh, or Unforgiven. Yeah, those are all great Westerns and those were the the character development on those were amazing. Those are some of the best character development. And here, yeah, it just felt like these actors were here. They kind of played it. You didn't find out about anybody's backstory except Denzel, and that was towards the end. Towards of the, the end. Thing. So, so yeah. Overall, I just feel like it wasn't. It, it didn't hit my western, you know, heart, which I love westerns. Too bland. Too bland. Too no, too much empty characters, and that's a big problem with movies these days. So, what's your score, man? I unfortunately gave this movie a six, barely. Um, I felt that. The people that I was actually more interested in, which was Red Harvest and um, Jack Horn, played by Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, but just two out of seven, that doesn't make me like, whoa, this is amazing. I kept wanting to see more of Red Harvest, and we didn't get that much of him. But um, unfortunately, like we talked about, you know, the set design was good. The costume design was good, but six, man. Yeah, same here. I give it a six. Uh, it's a movie that I, you know... If you like westerns, you could go check it out. If you don't, I, I say you could wait for it. You know, if you just need a film on the side, you want to go maybe a matinee. If you're bored one of these days, you go watch it. But it was so the underdeveloped characters, the underdeveloped story, the underdeveloped um, heroine, like you said before. Yeah. You know, like we don't even know her name, kind of thing. She's forgettable. Um, there was like she had like a sidekick too that, that they don't was... even cheer for her at the end for saving the town. Like I don't get that. Uh, yeah, like it was something where like a lot of the characters felt bland and the good part about it. And personally, I liked all seven of them. I think they all played it very well. Um, you know, one of my favorite was, um, Young Hung Lee. He was the, um, Japanese assassin that, um, played with, um, Ethan Hawke. They were together. They met together. That was a great part. But overall, yeah, like you're right. Like it's something where, you know, you got seven members that are great in the story, but then the rest of it's kind of like, uh, you know, the action scenes were great. Those were really cool. Those were very coordinated. I think that's what they really wanted to capture. But for a two hour film and you only it's get about long. 20 minutes of action and yeah. then like the rest of it was very bland. Yeah, yeah. that's how I think that's why our score would be a six out of 10 overall, guys. So if you want to go watch it, check it out. But overall, I recommend waiting. Hey, what's up, guys? Benji and Anthony here again. And thank you for joining us at the bar for the Magnificent Center Review. Join us this Wednesday when we do a viewer-selected film, Inception, directed by Christopher Nolan, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, and your favorite, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's amazing. I love him as an actor. Again, guys, in the comments down below, let us know what you guys thought about Magnificent Seven. Let us know what you guys think about Inception. And also, maybe some of your favorite Westerns if you guys are into those kind of movies. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in the bottom. And thank you for joining us at the bar again, and have a good one. Holy... Can make the world seem bright. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Go.